Hi guys, it's Shu here. I just wanted to drop in to see how you guys were doing. Again, I hope you're doing however it is that you're doing. Um, these are really not normal times and I hope that you are taking care of yourselves as best you can. Uh, be gentle with yourselves, be gentle with those around you again as best you can and I just wanted to send you lots and lots of love. I do have a little bit more to say and if you want to go to the episode, the time code is here. So for those of you who stayed behind, um, I just want to share that uh, okay, I don't know who, I don't know if this is relevant to you guys, but um, I think that when I was going through what I was going through, it really helped for me to hear this. So I'm just going to put it out there for whoever might want to hear this. It's okay to not feel okay. And it's also okay to feel scared about feeling not okay. There was a period of time where I was really scared of not feeling okay and I still get that now sometimes. Uh, about five years ago, I was diagnosed with depression and it took me a long time to admit it or to even say anything about depression. I have been on a mixture of medication and therapy for the past five years and it's really, really helped and I just wanted to share that at that time, I kind of felt like if I allowed myself to feel bad, then I was giving in to the emotion that the emotions won, then that meant that I was weak or that I wasn't trying hard enough. I just want to tell you that that is really not true because what was happening before I got diagnosed with depression was that I was probably already depressed. For myself, it was so ingrained to be afraid of being weak or to be self-absorbed because what are you depressed about when there's so much suffering in the world? And I just want to remind you that they are two separate things. And I would liken a lot of those uh, emotions that like hurt, pain, sadness, and mental illnesses, depression, all that too physical wounds like cuts and scrapes and um, gashes and broken broken bones and all that like if we would if we could see them that maybe we would be more inclined to give them time to heal so when I was probably already depressed before I got diagnosed it was kind of like I was still trying to power through everything and I would liken it to running with a broken leg like it gave it no time to heal and it probably made it worse. Letting yourself feel those emotions does not mean that you are self-absorbed and that you will only be able to ever help yourself. I just want to remind you that that's not true and I want to remind you that you are important and that your feelings are important. And maybe as like an added assurance or incentive or however you see it, like if I don't learn how to take care of myself, how am I going to learn how to take care of someone else? If I cut myself and I say, that's not a big deal, you know, other people are suffering and there's, that person's got a broken leg and that person like hit their head, this cut is like nothing. If somebody else cuts themselves, what am I going to say to them? Probably the same thing that I've learned to say to myself, right? But I think a lot of us don't actually want to do that and yeah, Maybe we weren't taught that growing up, um, most likely because the people uh, around us, the adults at that point, maybe they didn't, they weren't taught how to take care of themselves either. And maybe let's say you do know how to take care of other people, but you're constantly getting cuts all over the place, like as you treat other people, you're bleeding out you know, and you're kind of not in the optimum position or maybe you won't be able to help for as long as you might have wanted to. I hope that you know it's important to take care of yourself and that you are important and that you need to be taken care of and trust that when you do that, that you will be able to spread your love and your light and your help in the way that you want. So last week was really bad for me, this week was a little bit better and what I have been trying to do is that on days where I feel like I have a little bit more energy, I've been doing my 5 minute magic routine which is to put on a full face of makeup <laughs> and then after that uh, sometimes I feel better and I do my hair. I know I've gotten some comments about my hair, it's on purpose. 
I like it like this. And then I got dressed up. Well, not completely because of sweatpants. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so um, yeah. Do whatever you can whenever you can and really be gentle with yourselves. And I just... Virtual hugs. <laughs> Alright. So take care of yourselves and when you have the capacity, look out for someone else as well. Okay? Alright. Um, okay, back to regular programming. Hello girlfriends and welcome to another episode of Tried and Tested. Alright, so there are a lot of food challenge videos on YouTube and one of them that we saw was I only ate black food for 24 hours. I'm not going to do that today, but it gave us the idea of trying out black snacks. So, let's go! This is the Daybug Ghost Pepper Spicy Chicken Noodles. It's got flaming spicy chicken madness. And apparently, this is the hottest instant noodles in the world. They say it's even hotter than the Samyang Fire Noodles which they use for the challenge. In terms of Scoville heat units for peppers, Ghost Pepper is around 1 million. And like Chili Padi is about 50,000 to 100,000. This is like very hot. And actually I'm very scared about this because like all these people who eat spicy food, they're all like, this is very, very, very hot. And like, I don't even eat that much spicy food. I'm scared. <laughs> all right, so this is where the torture will be coming from. And the noodles are black because apparently it's a mixture of cocoa powder and berry extract. I don't think I'll be able to taste any of that. Come, let's cook it and then let's burn. Okay, so I'm gonna leave some of the noodle like original flavor on the side first. I'm gonna put in this. You know sometimes when I see this kind of thing, like I, I have the urge to just try the seasoning like on its own. In this instance, I have no such urge. I feel like it would be dangerous and affect my performance for the rest of the episode. Wow, it's starting to turn like bright red. You know what, maybe it's not that bad lah. You'll see with me. Wow, it smells delicious though. So now you can see with and without the ghost pepper seasoning. Okay, I'm gonna try it without the seasoning first. It tastes like regular instant noodles to me. I taste no cocoa powder or berry extract. Here we go. That's so yummy. That's so hot. <laughs> it's really hot. I'm getting hotter and hotter. I can prepare today. The burn is not stopping. This is definitely <sighs> spiciest. <sighs> Anything I've ever had. Whoa! I didn't eat that much at all. It's very weird because it's so hot. I feel like my mouth is producing a lot of saliva. I can feel it's still burning across my entire mouth, and my tongue, and even my gums. The funny thing is, I actually have to stop myself from eating some more because it was really tasty and I really like the taste. <laughs> but I'm not liking the sensation. It definitely is hotter than the Samyang one because I have had the Samyang one and I can sort of like finish that with aid, of course. I can't see myself kind of finishing this, but I do want it. You know what? I'm going to do it again because it's fun. It's really tasty. Hey, maybe this part is not... Ooh, no. Here we go again. Mmm. <laughs> oh, my nose is starting to run now. <laughs> I can feel my throat constricting. <laughs> not in a medical is dangerous way, but... Oh, it was very hot. <laughs> okay. Overall, really tasty and is as hot as it says it is 10. 1 million match you on the school. I see your 1 million and match you your 1 million. So Mr. Potato and Debak teamed up to come up with a version of this ghost pepper potato chip. It's a potato chip version of the ghost pepper noodles that we had just now. Ooh, it's gonna be interesting. If you look at the top of the can, you even get a certificate of achievement if you manage to finish this whole can in one sitting. Judging on my um, performance with the instant noodles, I do not think this is something that I'll be aiming for. Let's try one chip, okay? <laughs> wow, so black. 
I try half a chip first, okay? Oh, so tasty! It's quite salty, actually. Ooh. There we go. Oh, the burn is not as bad though. If you like the flavour, this might be a better thing to go for. It's hot. I can definitely feel the burn here right now. And it's slowly spreading. Like this. I can taste this for like a longer period of time than I could taste the noodles. Like now I can still taste the potato chip. I can still taste the seasoning. The seasoning is like, I can't really put like a flavour to it. It just feels like general like seasoning. You know, like something salty. <laughs> hey man. I could finish this. <laughs> They're not that spicy. The only thing that's stopping me is because I can't eat that much potato. So if the noodles was uh, at a 10 for the spicy uh, level, this would be eh, not even a 5. Because it's really not that spicy. Alright, so we just so happen to have these chips from Lay's. The Max Deep Rich Flaming Spicy Flavoured. And it's not spicy at all. It's almost like sweet. It's kind of like sweet chilli, you know? So I think for people who like to look for like a kick in their potato chips, I find that a lot of times you will end up dealing with things like this, right? Where it is just not spicy at all. And it says that it is, which is slightly disappointing, I think, especially for people who really like heat in their food. So in which case, I feel like this would be a great thing for you. But then you might be disappointed again because it's not as spicy as it says it is, but it's still spicy. So if you were to call this a spicy potato chip, like, I can go with that. Whereas for like things like this, it's like usually like not spicy at all. So I would adjust the expectation. Is it like a version of the cup noodles? I don't know. Because that one is really hot. Painfully hot. So, yeah, this was a slight disappointment. Especially with the certificate and everything, you know. As a tasty spicy chip, I would give it like an 8 because it's really yummy. As a version of the cup noodle and is it as hot as the cup noodle was? Or like living up to that expectation? I don't know, I'll give this like a 3. Yeah. This is black oolong mango. So this is a dried mango that's been boiled in oolong tea and also it's covered with sugar and there's some licorice in there. I'm very excited because I love these like preserved things. Whoa, what is that? That is a very strong smell. It kind of smells like preserved plum. I want to say like a Chinese medicine shop. You know, when you walk past a Chinese medicine shop, there's often some kind of unidentifiable herb in the air. I mean, unidentifiable to me lah, but they all kind of like smell like that. So it kind of smells like a Chinese medicine shop. I was very excited to try it, but the smell... <laughs> it's a bit like, eh? <laughs> oh, and it looks a bit scary as well. It doesn't look very appetizing. <laughs> wow, it's very solid and substantial. It smells like food. It smells like some herbal chicken and cinnamon. <laughs> I don't know what it's smelling. It's, it's like, this reminds me of all of those things. Okay, let's try. There is no mango taste whatsoever. I cannot taste any oolong. There's something a bit acidic about it. It has the texture of a lot of preserved fruits and it tastes a lot like plum. If you didn't tell me this was mango, I'd be like, wow, that's a very big plum. Taste-wise, it tastes like preserved roselle. There's a slight tartness, a slight acidity to it. I think they put so much sugar on this thing that it uh, helps to like sweeten up the whole thing, which is quite nice. I don't taste any licorice. It's strangely addictive. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It tastes very... Well, it's very altered. <laughs> like, it's unrecognisable as a mango. But it's very interesting. Like, I've never had mango like that. Would I have mango like that again? You know what? I actually wouldn't mind. I feel like it's not super surprising in terms of its taste, but it's surprising because it's a mango. So overall, I think I'm gonna give this like maybe a 7.5. This is a black hojicha cornetto. It's got black hojicha ice cream as well as chocolate balls and a charcoal cone. So this has been released in countries like Thailand and Indonesia and now it's finally in Singapore. Actually, to me, this looks like a grey charcoal lavender colour but not so much black. Cone is kind of like a dark brown but I guess this is what kind of passes off as charcoal. I'm kind of disappointed because it's not black but it's okay. Oh, it's actually quite tasty. You get some of that bitterness from the tea at the end of it. Very light tea 
blue flavored ice cream. You get it much more in the aftertaste. The ice cream itself, it kind of reminds me of the Unicornetto. Like it's slightly airier in its texture. It's not like a full heavy cream kind of ice cream. As I'm eating it though, I don't quite get a sense of it being Hojicha flavoured. I feel like I kind of have to look for the flavouring. I think it's got chocolate core here. So I need to eat so much of it to show <laughs> what's in it. I think it's overall like pretty okay. Like again, like I said, like the flavouring of the Hojicha is not very strong. But it's more like it kind of comes in and out in like wafts. Hojicha with like milk. I think it's a good combination. So Hojicha ice cream is a really nice combination and with the chocolate, it brings out the roastiness of the tea which makes it a nice match. I kind of see this more of an afternoon treat rather than like an after dinner dessert. Almost as though like it's preparing you for dinner, you know, like it's opening your appetite. It's a nice combination. It could do with more Hojicha flavour, I think. And also it's not black like they said it was. So I think overall I would give this a 7.5. Just that it didn't hit a few of the things that it said it was, but as an ice cream, it's still enjoyable. This is Chocolate Crispy Black Rice Viral. So, the little balls of chocolate covered rice crispies, I think, and they hope it will go viral. I don't know. All right, so let's see. Oh, it's quite yummy. Mm. Oh wait. Okay, I'm not sure. It's very sweet. Like, it's the kind of sugary sweetness that, you know, sometimes you eat too much, you get a sore throat kind. So it tastes a little bit plasticky. It tastes more like a chocolate flavouring than actual chocolate. I think it's nice because it's got that uh, crispy, kind of cracky outer shell, which is a really nice sensation to bite into. But Overall, the taste is not that great. It just feels like it's coating my tongue with some weird sweetener or like something. I think I'll give this a one because it makes a nice sound. This is a limited edition Mami Monster that you eat at your own risk. They even say here that it's very spicy, so it's not for children. First of all, I was quite surprised because they've gone blue with their packaging. Now, a lot of times when you see that something is very, very hot, they go red, right? But this is blue. First of all, it's black with like red, spicy seasoning on it. It just smells like a noodle snack, she said before her throat burned. <laughs> Are you scared for me? <laughs> oh, that's really yummy. Oh, that's hot. I'm okay with spicy food. I'm all right. I'm not great at it. It's not super hot, but it is hot. It's actually quite a comfortable burn. It's like a, enough of a kick, you know? But not so hot that that you can't think. But then I only had a small piece. I don't know. Let's try another. Let's have a little bit more. It's not like a distinct flavour, like a spicy chicken or a spicy beef or like a spicy, you know? It's just not spicy meat. It's just like spice. It's just like chilli powder. Chili powder over pretty much regular mommy. I think you know it, but <laughs> it's not super super hot. But I feel like if I ate some more, that would really start to burn. Yeah. So now like my whole throat is burning, uh, and my tongue a little bit. Actually, you know what? I would even say that with all their warnings and everything on it, I'm kind of slightly disappointed by how it's not crazy hot to the point of torture. But I guess also if kids end up eating this by accident, that would not be good. Overall, I would give this like a 8 out of 10. It's still a great snack and it's nice and spicy and it's fun. This is the Taiwanese black sugar drink. So I love Taiwanese black sugar drinks because um, I mean sometimes like when your throat is not feeling great or like your voice is not feeling 100% like I find that these really help. Kind of reminds me a little bit of gula melaka. All these like sugars that are just darker and caramelized they just feel so nice and warm. There are many different types of black sugar drink. This one is the one with ginger in it. So it feels really hard but it's not like it's hard candy. It kind of feels like it's sugar that's kind of been like compressed together. I just took a little 
Oh, I'm looking forward to this drink. It's so nice. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is to dissolve this in water. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of room temperature water and then now I'm going to add in the hot water. Can you see the gin like ginger? <laughs> it actually looks a bit gross. It's like a mole with hairs growing out. Can't see that anymore, can you? <laughs> the ginger taste is very, very strong. Like it's got a great like gingery kick. It's so spicy. Okay, the sugar is interesting because it just is like black sugar water, but it tastes so yummy. The sugar is sweet, but there's also a flavor to it. It's just got more body to it. You can totally imagine having this like on a cold rainy day. I'll give this a 9 out of 10. No like 10 out of 10 lah. The ginger is really nice. I love when gingery drinks have a proper gingery kick. So lovely. Ten ten. Here we have some black peanuts. So they look ordinary on the outside, but inside the peanuts are black. Oh, they smell just very light and fragrant. Outside they look completely normal. Oh, did you guys do this thing where like you do this and then you put it on your ears? When I was, I think in primary school, every time I had like peanuts or groundnuts, I would use them as earrings. See, so fashion. Make it fashion. <laughs> okay, so just the skin is black, but the inside, like when the skin comes off, it's just a regular peanut. They really smell like regular nuts. The smell of the peanut is like slightly milder. Oh, they're pretty good. Even the unsalted peanuts, sometimes they can be like slightly on the oilier or like saltier side. Um, this one is quite mild and not very oily at all. They kind of taste like, uh, you know how if you get peanut butter, right? And you get the no sugar peanut butter, it kind of reminds me of that. Overall, I think this is great. I can imagine it with a nice cup of tea. It's very mild and fragrant and quite lovely. Uh, I'll give this a 9 out of 10. Alright, we've come to the end of the episode. If you want to find out more about the products, where to get them from, you can go to our Tried and Tested Facebook page or you can check out the links in the description box down below. And if you have already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. Now, all you need to do is... Hit that bell. And you'll be notified every time a new video comes out onto YouTube. Or you can just download the Click Network app and you'll be able to watch the videos before they come out onto YouTube. And it's also newly revamped. Go and check it out. Alright? Okay, till next time. Let's go be beautiful. Wash your hands. <laughs>